Hi, JJ community. Welcome to Alfie. Um, this video is piggybacking off a Facebook Live gathering that I just led over in the Journey Junkie community. However, you guys know I live in the Caribbean and the Wi-Fi did not want to cooperate. So I am here repeating this video because it is so important that you guys really hear and understand the message that I want to share with you. If you are on my email list, you received this important message in your inbox. And I just want to elaborate on it a little bit more here with you guys who are part of the channel and might not be part of my email newsletter, right? So uh, the big news is that I am taking a break for the rest of 2018. I will no longer be showing up and producing new yoga video content, uh, writing new blog posts, or sending out weekly emails. And the biggest reason for this is that I feel very burnt out and fatigued and misaligned within uh, my business as an individual, a yoga teacher, a yoga student, and a business owner. And it's become very apparent that I'm stuck in a cycle of creation that's very burdened by the pressure to continue to create, to remain relevant, to uh, make sure that the community continues to grow. And um, I've noticed that this, this mentality is coming from a space of scarcity or lack. And it's continuing to make me feel stuck and not giving me the space to dream or imagine what this community could be and how it could evolve, right? And so uh, I am giving myself permission to take a few steps backward and to rest and to realign and to reimagine and to reconnect and rejuvenate all the rewords so that I can come back in the new year with my best foot forward um, with my energy realigned in a way that I can come to you guys and feel like I'm bringing you the true essence of yoga from the lens of, through the lens of my journey, right? And so, um, you know, I have lived on this sailboat now, Alfie, for almost a year. And within that time, I've been given a lot of space to and a lot of opportunities to digest a lot of material, material like books and articles and um, really study materials that speak to me and also attend a few in-person trainings with teachers that I highly respect. And um, through those experiences, I have really learned that my energy and your energy is everything. And if that energy is not feeling aligned and in this state of flow, then a lot of what we do feels heavy and forced. And this is how I've been feeling lately within the JJ community, within my baby, my business. And um, I've also learned how to bring that energy back into alignment through awareness, through attention, and through action. And so this is my, I'm at the action phase of taking a step back so that I can come back and step forward for myself and for this community at large. Now, um, you know, some of the things that are swirling in my mind already, there's of course so many ideas that are surfacing just thinking about how I can, um, how I can level up as a yoga teacher, how I can take the responsibility of being a yoga teacher more seriously, how I can bring the essence of yoga back into yoga and how I can stop creating just to create and to remain relevant in this really fast paced online space, right? And so some of the things I am resonating with are going back to the days that I attended a yoga studio and how those yoga studios helped me and supported me and reminiscing on the pieces that yoga studios offered, right? And so some of those things were yoga classes taught by incredible yoga teachers that had anatomical and physiological context that wove in the yogic lineage and studies, that taught the chakra system, that offered mudras, that gave long shavasanas, 
that week upon week, if you continue to visit the same yoga teacher, you would progress and you would walk away feeling like you really learned something on a body, mind, soul level, right? So these classes that were just jam-packed with knowledge and wisdom and heartfelt intention. Uh, yoga studios also offer weekend workshops and trainings and book clubs and uh, community spaces where people can connect and uh, take their practice off the mat and into real life, into the real world. A lot of yoga studios have sh stores that you can shop in and they also offer retreats um, off-site, right? So these are things that light me up and these are things that I used to really value at my yoga studio and these are things that I want to reimagine coming into the online space and creating an online studio space that breathes and operates just like a brick and mortar studio space would. So that's where my heart and head are at and that's what I'm going to be focusing on in these next few months as I take a step back. Now I I know a lot of you have been with me for quite a few years now and a lot of you are maybe here with me for 12 months, 6 months and a lot of you have maybe just joined me in the last few weeks, right? And so I want to quickly recap my journey and how I got to this space so that we're all on the same page and you guys know more about me, yeah? So at age 24, I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version. At age 24, I moved to Italy left my first corporate gig, and while living in Italy, I met a plethora of people who were living by blogging online. They were traveling the world and sharing their work online and getting paid for it. And I was like, huh, you can do that? That exists? What? My college didn't tell me that. My parents didn't tell me that. No one's talking about this. How can I do this? I get back to the States. I get back into cubicle land, working back in the corporate marketing field. And I remember telling my husband, I'm going to get online. I want to have a presence and figure this whole thing out. Like, how are people doing this? So the Journey Junkie began as a travel space. If you go way back in the archives, you can find some really old pieces about travel. And they're pretty terrible. I sound like a Wikipedia writer. I might have copyrighted some of their stuff. But... <laughs> Needless to say, I stopped traveling and I dove headfirst into my yoga practice. And so then my blogging shifted to speaking about yoga and sharing a lot about yoga. And if you were with me then, I was talking about five yoga leggings to wear and five books to read and five restorative yoga poses to do and how to make a dream catcher and how to create a home yoga space like a Zen Den where we used to film in. And um, at that time, I was also going through yoga teacher training and so I was learning about my own evolution on a body, mind, soul level. I was cultivating all this newfound muscle tone and strength. I was balancing on my arms and my head and my hands. And simultaneously, I was peeling back all of these mental, emotional layers that um, were tricking me into thinking that I was having this really incredible, fulfilling experience here on planet Earth. Not that I wasn't, right? But I was learning a lot about myself. And then in that same breath, I also was reintroduced to my soul that I kind of got separated from after a very, um, a very organized upbringing in the, the Jewish religion, right? In Judaism. And so I was relearning my soul and understanding what that meant and really integrating body, mind, and soul through the yoga practice. And I felt incredible, right? So I then began to teach in studios after work and on the weekends and I quickly burnt out like most new yoga teachers do and I really had a vision that I was going to maybe blog a little bit, get a few sponsored posts like many people do from brands and I would teach in studios and I would get private clients and land some corporate gigs and maybe lead a retreat and that it would be easy peasy but it's not easy peasy and if you're a yoga teacher watching this you know how much work goes into building up your presence within a local community right and also competing with the yoga teachers who already have a carved out space and clientele it's uh really time consuming and really energy sucking so I was looking at my corporate career in marketing and I was looking at being a full-time yoga teacher in a local community and I thought to myself, there's got to be a better way, right? There has to be a way that I don't have to burn out. So 
that brings me to YouTube. And I got onto YouTube and I cut down my studio classes and I began to share my practice online and realized that YouTube was the segue for me to connect with you guys and build community and share my practice and help you build your own practice from the comfort of your home for free. So it was this beautiful um, back and forth tool where I got to build community, connect with you guys on a personal level and teach yoga still, right? Like not lose all of the training that I had just um, experienced and learned, right? And also this interest I had in being a yoga teacher. And many of you found me through the 30 Pose journey. It was the first big journey challenge program that I put out on the internet. And um, gosh, I was like, three years ago, I think the 30 pose journey came out. And um, since then, you know, we've had yoga body boot camp and the chakra challenge and back to yoga basics, the body mind soul detox opened and ignite your power. And I've led my first yoga retreat and Myself as a yoga teacher and as a human individual and as a business owner, I have greatly evolved through all of that. And then let me bring you to now, the present moment. So when I first got on YouTube, I had this giant sense of possibility and opportunity and inspiration. And over the years, that feeling has began to contract and lessen. And I'm now at a place of feeling really stuck and misaligned with how I teach in the online yoga space. And for those of you who don't know much about YouTube, YouTube as an income stream, right? And so this is a business as an income stream operates off of views and how many views you get dictates how much money you make and also how many ads you insert into your videos. So uh, videos, right, on YouTube, the best way to get views is to create the catchiest YouTube title for your video. And that might work in communities and channels outside of yoga, but I really don't think it's conducive to the yoga space. And here's why. Because if you're only naming your classes 15 minutes to fire up your core, 10 minutes to tone your booty, 20 minute morning routine to fire up your day, um, 10 minute routine to master chaturanga, 15 minute class to get into handstand, right? Like all of these really catchy clickbaity titles um, that will garner views and views garner income, right? But as you guys have noticed with me, my husband is always knocking me that I'm not making my titles catchy enough, but I'm trying to give you guys the title that is in line with the intention of the class, which usually includes like, twist towards your best self or a goddess morning yoga routine, you know, these feelings that don't translate to views. And so I've come to learn that what resonates and aligns with me as a yoga teacher does not really align with YouTube's algorithm and income stream. And that's okay, right? Being in the online space or any space, we have full permission to pivot and change and do what works best for us. And that is why I'm taking the rest of 2018 off to learn about myself and learn how I can pivot and change. Okay. So yeah, I think one other, two other really important things I want to share with you guys are, um, as a business owner, I recently, as a business owner, I feel like I'm an employee of my business. And for anyone who's an entrepreneur, you leave your cushy, um, stable job, right? with benefits and a, uh, a salary that's coming in that you know is um, reliable. You leave all that because you have this vision, this dream, right, of creating something larger than yourself. And I think what tends to happen for a lot of business owners is we get caught up in the tasks and the to-dos and keeping up with the Joneses and remaining relevant that we become an employee of our business, right? And we left our old company as an employee so that we could be a CEO, so we could take on the visionary role, so we could be the dreamer. And I have realized that I am an employee of the Journey Junkie community. I have no longer reside, I'm no longer residing in that visionary dreamer CEO role that I am required to really be in to steer this ship, right? Um, so 
I want to show up here with the words I choose to and not the words I have to. And in taking this time away from the community and creating a buffer and creating a boundary and taking and creating space, um, the goal is that I come back in that visionary role as the dreamer for how powerful an online yoga community can be and also how I can serve you on a body, mind, soul level and not on a one-off class, right? So let me give you a really good example of what I mean here. I might do a one-off class on YouTube to build strength, to cultivate strength and teach you about your core, right? But a one-off class is not enough to learn about your core, okay? Your core has so many different muscles and functions that really to learn about your core and integrate core practices into your, uh, into your journey, we need like a four week course, right? We need a four week journey that layers each week so you continue to practice the same stuff and then learn more and learn more so that you really have a, a, an understanding of how your core supports you and also how your core connects to your energy system, your chakra system, and how your core integrates with who you are, right? Past the physical layer. Let's talk about the mind and the soul layer of your core. So this is how I want to come back to you guys. Um, that, that is, that's my approach, right? I'm tired of one-off classes that don't really share knowledge and wisdom and create a potent experience. Yoga should be medicine. Yoga should be healing. And um, I'm feeling called upon to bring the yoga back into the yoga, right? Not only the asana, but if we're talking about the eight limbs of yoga, the yamas, how we operate in the world, the niyamas, our moral constraints, the asana, the physical, the pranayama, the breathing, the pratyahara, the dharana, and the dhyana, the withdrawal and the concentration that leads to meditation, and the samadhi, which is bliss, integration, enlightenment, right? So how can we bring in all of the limbs of yoga back into an online space? That is what I am pondering, um, and that is what I hope to do when I return. So, ha. Huh. How can you, um, what can you do right now, right? Uh, number one, I would love to learn more about you and what you need and what you, um, what your interests are within the, the yoga community and your personal yoga practice. So I have a survey that you can click the link in the description below to let me learn more about you, which I'll definitely be taking into consideration as I step away. And then also, if you are not on my email list, the best way to know what's happening with this community is to be on that list. So there's also a link to make sure you're on that list in the description below. And I will be back here connecting with those who are on my email list uh, for the winter solstice, uh, which is about two months from now. So I hope to be checking in and updating you on some of the findings that I have found in this time away and share with you where I see this community going. Uh, so again, if you want that winter solstice email, make sure you're on the email list. The link is in the description below. Mm, okay. Thank you so much for listening to this video. If you got to this final point, I have been talking a lot and I really appreciate your attention, your focus and your energy, as well as your commitment to myself as your yoga teacher and guide and this entire community. Please know that I believe this is in the best of service to help all of us move forward and live the journey, which is the mantra, the, the, the motto for this community, right? We're not letting the journey live us. And right now I am letting the journey live me within my business. And so I'm ready to start taking the reins back and living it. Uh, so on that note, um, I so appreciate your support. I so appreciate you practicing with me in your home and inviting me into your home. And I am so excited to see um, what this next chapter entails and to write that, those, those chapters right beside you. Yeah. So, okay. Don't forget those links in the description below. And I can't wait to reconnect with you guys in a few months. And uh, in the meantime, just keep loving your journey. Continue to live it wholeheartedly, body, mind, and soul.